Today we're welcoming a new Puri MAC 2019 graduate back to the School of Accounting and Finance and the University of Waterloo. Welcome back Anu. Thanks. Welcome back to campus. Um, I think uh, this is it's this beautiful, beautiful area that we have. It's the Arts Quad, but I believe this wasn't here when you, even by the time you graduated in um, 2019, right? Yeah, I think uh, I think it actually just started maybe the last term that we were here, but definitely <laughs> I saw the cold. It was, it was not as warm as it is right now because it was mainly <laughs> cold at that time when it was kind of all getting built together, but it's a beautiful place, very nice to see DP as well mm -hmm. and, and everything around campus and it's just great to be back. Yeah, yeah, it's, there's definitely lots happening across campus, tons of construction as always. <laughs> of course, well I mean so, we're used to that in Kitchener-Waterloo. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly, right, like absolutely always, um, always construction, like if it's summer it's construction. Yep, <laughs> so. that's, that's usually what it is. But it's nice because then after that, you always get to see the new buildings that come out. And I mean, I'm, I'm still, I'm thankful to be living about 20 minutes from here. So I like to always come back and check out campus every now and then. And mm -hmm. even stuff like the new uh, PAC expansion with SLC, that's right. really cool. And then just yeah. everything going on around campus. It's, it's great to be back. Yeah, <laughs> awesome. Good stuff. Well, thank you. Thank you for coming onto campus and chatting with us. Um, we'd love to catch up with you in terms of your career path, um, chat about some of the fun stories that, um, of your university experiences, um, but also what you're doing now. So let's start with, um, let's start with uh, your, your career path. Um, sure. So yeah, what are you doing now and what, what role do you hold? Sure. Uh, so currently I'm working at Deloitte. I'm in their global corporate development team. So basically we support the entire network. So all Deloitte firms, since they are individual member firms, we support the acquisitions and strategic projects. So M&A type of activity, as well as any strategic initiatives that individual member firms want to take on. Uh, we essentially support those types of projects and it's great. I, I get to work with a lot of people from all over the world. Sometimes it's, it, sometimes it's great. Sometimes it's, you know, 8 p.m., 7 a.m. type calls <laughs> every now and then. Um, but it's, it's great just to be able to see what everything, how everything is functioning in such a large organization. Um, and I love my team. My team is all actually based out of the U.S. So I met them for the first time, I want to say about a month back, where we had a team meeting in Chicago. And it was really cool to be able to see some, see everyone after, you know, two years of working with, with each other in the pandemic and just doing Zoom calls and all that. Um, but it was really cool because we, we met up and it was as if we had been working together in person all, all along since everyone knew how each other behaved and um, their personalities and everything and yeah, it was, it, it's been great that way. Um, and yeah, before that I was also at Deloitte in, in the finance and performance consulting group um, and I've, uh, I've learned a lot from obviously all the people that I've met and just where my career is taking me. Excited to be back. Awesome. Sounds great. Yeah, and it certainly sounds like um, the virtual, virtual working from home, virtual platform really didn't um, discourage that team building um, environment and finding ways just to connect and finding ways to to ensure that that you get to know your teammates. Yeah, yeah. exactly. I think again with the virtual environment it was so different and i'm sure you had to interact with that as well with being on campus off campus sometimes hybrid on campus and off right. campus um, but i think for us we we tried to have that sense of personal touch whether it's through some sort of just you know team building activities some sort of games every now and then that we play together to get to know each other beyond just you know the working nine to five um, I think that's very helpful in, in trying to build those relationships, whereas in person you could obviously just go out and have a dinner or um, you know go to an escape room or something like that, which we've done in the past with some of my previous teams. Um, but in, in a virtual environment, you have to obviously take a little bit of an extra step, but I think it's definitely doable. And we, we do that even like, I mean, we're going to get into what I'm wearing and Envision afterwards, but <laughs> that's how we were also interacting uh, because we didn't have our very first social until uh, the end of July and before oh, that. Wow. Yeah, that, we didn't. Yeah. We hadn't actually all met in person as well, and we were working remote and having video calls and uh, meeting on a weekly basis there as well. So that's right for yeah. last two, three years. Right? Almost uh, two years, yeah. I would say. Yeah, two about years. two years. We started yeah. in 2020, so it's yeah, just just a little over two years. Uh, we were all virtual, and uh, it was great to just you know connect and see everyone and what everyone's up to. And we had a lot of fun taking Instagram reels <laughs> and all that fun stuff. But yeah, that's awesome. And we'll get 
to envision very shortly, 100%. but I would love to um, get your sense and hear a little bit of some of the fun things that, um, fun, interesting things that had helped launch your career, um, but while you were still a student at the University of Waterloo. So you've had, you've had an opportunities to be part of the Student Venture Fund um, back in 2018, 2019, but also in February of 2019. You were named and selected as um, one, one of, I think, only 13 candidates that year across Canada to be part of the CEO for a Day um, program. So do you want to talk a little bit about that? Yeah, I mean, I would love to. I think um, when I look back at SVF and all the other stuff that I've done, ACE Consulting Group and uh, just a lot of other fantastic organizations that shaped me into who I am, we're, we're all culminating to that CEO for a day moment, I think, because that was just incredible. I don't think I've seen anything or been a part of anything that significant and that powerful. Um, the it, application process itself was I want to say like four or five different stages so they made you they you had a phone interview you had a um, you had sort of like a personality t assessment as well in there which was really cool because it it provided some insights um, and then on top of that you had just a final sort of half day interview challenge that that culminated where you get speed interviews with everyone and got to got to meet a lot of people and just learn a lot there was a session I think done by McKinsey as well on uh, just some of their basics on consulting and it was just a really cool experience so I making it to the fi semifinals as they call it um, because when when you get selected it's a finalist per se uh -huh. so when you make it to the semifinals I for me that was what I wanted to do and uh, I was I was very glad just to be able to see everyone and learn so much through the journey and then when I got the phone call being like oh hey you know we wanted to inform you that you've been matched uh, for the CEO for a day and it was with uh, Frederick Landmitters, who's the uh, CEO of Molson Coors, and that yeah. was actually one of my top choices. <laughs> I was like, that's really cool. I wanted to see that because I'm a huge Leafs fan. Um, I, I, I'm a diehard Leafs fan. I think every year we're going to win the cup and it doesn't work next out that year. way. Next year. It's always it's next always year. It's always next year. I think year. I feel good, uh, good about this year's chances, <laughs> I want to say. Um, but yeah, I, I just that experience for me was just really, really powerful. I think recalling it woke up. Um, drove to the Molson Coors factory uh, and their, their headquarters in Etobicoke at around, I want to say, 8.30. And I was welcomed with all this warmth and this, the corporate culture was great. Everyone was really happy to see me. Um, they welcomed me and they actually like treated me as the CEO and it was, it was really interesting. And they had, um, so I, I met their brand manager, I met uh, someone from their legal team, a lot of different representatives from all over the organization. And it was a packed day from nine to four, I was basically in meetings or seeing somebody or learning something um, each time. And it was, it was very interesting to be able to see, you know, what type of impact the CEO has and how much work they have to go through and all the different stakeholders that they're dealing with on 15 minute, minute meetings basically every, every day. Um, and it also culminated with me actually having an opportunity to uh, sit in uh, the CEO's seats at the Leafs game, nice. which was fantastic because it was the day before my birthday. So it was, a, it was like literally the best birthday gift I've ever had. <laughs> I took selfies with Morgan Riley and all these other great oh. <laughs> hockey players I've seen on TV all the time. Um, but yeah, I think it was just a very powerful experience and I wouldn't have had that had it not been for a mentor that I've had at, in SAF who was previously also a CEO for a day finalist, uh, Adnan. Adnan, Adnan Khan. Khan. Yeah, yeah, so he he had gone through the experience and he told me about it. And that's the only reason I had applied for it. Um, but, you know, it was great that that year we had two representatives. So it was that's me right. and Ria, Ria Bardwa. That's she was right. also, uh, she also, I think, shadowed the CEO of Kellogg's, if I'm not that's mistaken. That's right, yeah. Yeah, so it was, yeah. it was great. It was just a great experience. And I, I highly recommend to everyone, like, if you're going through it, just go through the experience anyways, even if you don't make it to the semifinals. You, um, I believe everyone gets to do the personality assessment and um, the first couple stages. And you learn a lot through that process and you learn a lot about what it is to be in an executive role and the importance and all the different um, factors that go into making a successful executive as well. So. Now, would you say that that experience had um, a, a very impactful or large impact? on how you define your role and how you foresee your career at this point? I, I think definitely it, it allowed me to see, you know, what 
a good leader looks like and how I would want to emulate some something like that as I'm progressing in my career. Obviously, when you when you go from being the CEO to back the next day, just starting at starting a new role, you're back to the beginning. But you kind of see what that person did and how they shaped their career path to become where they are. And that was uh, I had an opportunity at the very end just to sit down with Frederick, and we sat down for. I want to say about half an hour, 45 minutes at the end. Um, he's got a lot of things going on, but he took that time to meet with me and, and just speak to me and answer all my questions. And I wanted to see how his career path led him to where he is. And he gave me a lot of meaningful advice at that time. And I still have his contact. So we have exchanged a few emails every now and then uh, just kind of to check in whatever what what's going on. And um, he's a great guy. I've learned a lot from, from that experience for sure. And I think moving forward as I progress my career and go into more leadership positions, I always think about, you know, how can I be that type of leader? Um, how can I build trust with my people that I'm working with above and below me? Um, because I think that's that's really key in, in any sort of business environment uh, position these days. Like it, it's really important to have um, those communication leadership skills uh, that you don't always get unless you're develop them, developing them on the job or through mentors and stuff like that.